tonight's story of King Arthur takes place back in medieval times when magic played an important part in people's lives. I, of course, play Merlin the Magician, King Arthur's sleight of hand man. <laughs> yes, indeed. It is I who arranged with the Lady of the Lake to make King Arthur a present of a magic sword. This, my friends, is the Excalibur. It saved King Arthur's life, you know. <laughs> Isn't it a masterpiece of craftsmanship, huh? Light in the scabbard, but heavy on your skull, as many a fallen foe will agree. While with his magic sword in his hand, King Arthur could do anything from cutting down knights in armor with one mighty dress to... <laughs> Watering flower pots? Oh, this is amazing. I never realized this sword was so versatile. And there were those that said the lady in the lake was all wet. Oh, my George. She's ingenious. <laughs> This is London in the third century, a London of fear and hunger, as the many kings of England made constant warfare on each other. It worried many people, especially this good citizen. <laughs> the citizen's name, Merlin. His occupation, magician. Greetings, hey, greetings, Spindle, my boy. Greetings, Master. You know, Merlin. I've been all over town. <laughs> Saw several people who needed magic badly, but <laughs> they just can't afford it. Times are hard. Yeah. Here, here now. <laughs> here, what is this? <laughs> my boy, are you practicing a hex? No, Master. For lunch, I tried to conjure up a duckling, and all I got was a handful of feathers. Well, and just remember that magic is like everything else. Always use logic and common sense. And be practical. <laughs> oh, I'm hungry. There's nothing in the cupboard, Master. Oh, my. Well, let's see. Uh, uh, maybe we can do something with this uh, pine knot. Uh, uh, Spindle, get me a goat's gallstone. <laughs> yes, uh, 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 mushrooms dug in the dark, and a pinch of salt from dragon's tears. Yes. I'll, I'll show you how practical magic can be. Here you are, Master. It's the last gallstone we have in stock. <laughs> now watch closely and observe how I transform this miserable object into a noble rose. Magic flame with wondrous light. Feed us with a rose today. Beautiful, Master. Simply beautiful. They don't make pine knots like they used to. Not anymore. Ooh, who could it be? Are you Merlin the Magician? Uh, not now, you, you Grace. I mean, Your Honor. <laughs> yeah, I am Merlin. Uh, tell me, what do you want? I, I owe no man a farthing. <laughs> Yet I paid my taxes. I have a magician's license. Uh, paid up uh, to the first of the year. <laughs> I come secretly to you from King Uther to the north. I am ordered to bring you to him with all speed. Yes, but why would King Uther wish to see me? Those are my orders, magician. We leave at once. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes, of course, of course. Yeah. And <laughs> we leave at once. Uh, uh, Spindle, get my traveling kit, and uh, uh, don't forget to feed the spiders while I'm gone. Uh, you know. A half day's journey to the north lay the castle of King Uther, a kind man and gentle ruler. And because of this, he is hated by the other kings. <laughs> I am honored to, to see your, your highness again. It was good of you to drop everything and hurry here, Merlin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thank you. Merlin, I know you for an honest magician, the only one in all of England who will not trade with the devil. 
I have my ethics, sire. I also know that you have a great love for your country. A love that saddens me sorely. I only wish there was some little thing I, I could do for this uh, <laughs> suffering land. Perhaps there is, Merlin. My beloved queen has given birth to a fine son. You well know that there are other kings in England who will attempt to destroy him before he can inherit my crown. You must take him with you to London, forgetting the secret of his royal birth. Raise him well and in proper health. Bring him to a good manhood. And if by then you judge he should know the truth, he may learn it from you. But, sire, a, a magician raise a prince? He will not be a prince, remember? Yes. Yes, sire. There he is, Merlin. <laughs> He's beautiful, sire. My messenger will see you safely back to London. Here's gold for the lad's food and clothing. I'll try to, to spend it wisely, sire. Farewell, my son. Brave you were born. Learn fairness. Just now, Merlin. Quickly. <laughs> Farewell, sire. Uh, have you a name for your son, sire? Yes. He is called Arthur. <laughs> Why does he cry so much? Seems like he hasn't slept in days. <laughs> it's high time to start mixing magic with you. Common sense. A minute of Sam! A minute of Sam! This is tougher than I thought. Let's see now. Well, I try now. It's simple, sir. All little Arthur wants is... Come, come, Mendel. Nothing, Nothing in magic is simple. No. Hey, watch this. magicians know about raising a baby. <laughs> we can't be expected to perform miracles. No, no, he should be taken to a place where he gets the proper care. Please, Master, not an orphanage. No, no, Spindle. <laughs> no, indeed. A castle. Good to see you, my dear friend Merlin. What have you there? Well, uh, good Sir Hector, I, I have here an infant needing a home and, and good surroundings such as you and your good wife <laughs> can give him. <laughs> How came you by him? Well, I, I was passing through the great gate of the city and, and someone, I know not whom, handed a bundle to me and ran. The child was in the bundle. <laughs> <laughs> See how he laughs. A happy baby. Yeah, did I last a live long day, Sir Hector. I, never have I seen an infant who was less troubled. As you know, I have a son, Kay by name. He'll be a brother to this boy and another son to my wife and I. And bless you, sir. You don't know what you have done for me. Come, I'll introduce you to your mother and brother. Goodbye, little Arthur. Goodbye, Sir Hector. And thank you. Yes, thank you very much. I'll answer it. Come in, I'm coming. Sir Kay, Arthur, this is a pleasant event. See you's here, Merlin. Ah, Sir Hector's fine sons. It's kind of you two young men to find time. There is an old magician. We've brought you a brace of roast pheasants from the kitchen, Merlin. They were taken from poachers arrested in our woods last night. I begged my father to set the poachers free, and he did. The people steal because they and their families are hungry. Someday, someone must put an end to this misery. 
There is to be a joust Thursday, and I am to be included. Will you come and watch, Merlin? All the lords and knights will be there, even King Pelinor. Pity the man who is picked to joust with that brute. <laughs> you say they'll all be there? Yes. I think I will join you. Yeah, <laughs> I like that. I like that very much. Wonderful. Until Thursday, then? <laughs> Many thanks for the birds, young man. It's Spindle. Did you hear what, what young Arthur said about England and her people? The time has come to change things in England. I'm getting old. I, I must move fast. What's the cause of that rabble gathered in the churchyard, brother? It must be the mysterious sword that appeared there yesterday. Mysterious sword? In the churchyard? No one knows where it came from. Come, I would see it. Make way for King Pelinor, you scum! How could such a thing have been moved here secretly? There's writing in gold on it. Hmm. Whoso pulleth out this sword of this stone and anvil is rightwise king of England. Nonsense, what a nonsense! If any sword makes a man king of all England, it will be this one! <laughs> Knights and grooms are assembled in the courtyard, sire. Shall we go to the jousting pavilion? What of King Pelinor and his brother? They are expected momentarily. Then we must wait. I will not court his displeasure. He has an evil temper. And he is an evil man. Caution, my son. His ears are everywhere. <laughs> and he has great ambitions, yes. He, he will rule England. It would be a rule of thievery and murder. Did you say something, Merlin? <laughs> oh, oh, only to myself. It's the privilege of old age. Uh, Sir Kay, your sword. Uh, where's your sword? It's gone. I would have wagered my life that it was in the scabbard. Hold everyone! <laughs> What's nonsense now? I fear, King Pelinor, that I have forgotten my sword. Ride back and fetch it. I'll fetch my brother's sword, King Pelinor. I'm not jousting. If you want a sword for your brother, Arthur, fetch that one in the anvil and prove that what is inscribed on it is idiocy. <laughs> yes, but if there is truth in it, only you, King Pelinor, can prove it. As the strongest and, and biggest of all kings, you can win the right to lead England here and now! Hmm. How say you, brother? The old fool is right. This is a perfect chance. Yes. <laughs> Why did you speak so to this monster? Should he draw the sword, darkness would fall over England. <laughs> Perhaps instead. <laughs> we shall see light. You dare mock Perinor? You will all live to regret this. You wanted the sword for your brother. Come, you young doe, take it. Me? No, no, I, I'm certain I, I could not. Go ahead, Archer, my boy. Try it. What can you lose, eh? But, but... Go on. Go on, boy. I've just got a feeling that the boy can do it. is only the son of Sir Ector. How can he be a king? Her silence! I have words of the greatest importance for all of you. Many years ago, I was given this young man to raise. 
and in turn, I placed him in the tender care of Sir Hector, who has reared him as a son. Is this true, sire? Yes, Arthur, tis true. To Arthur's true father, I gave an oath never to reveal his heritage until I judged the time to be proper. And who was the lad's father, magician? King Uther! Uther! <laughs> and your beloved! This is an infamous lie! Arthur cannot be king! It, 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 it is I who have the strength to rule! <laughs> <laughs> First, we must search for 50 of the bravest knights in England to help us. They will be seated around this table where we will make our plans together. What say you, Sir Lancelot? At your service, sire. There is one other important matter to be decided before the coronation. It would be most appropriate were I to share my throne with a wise and gracious queen. I have chosen Princess Guinevere, daughter of King Leodegrance. Uh, would it not be fitting for Sir Lancelot, the bravest of all knights, to bring the princess to London? His presence would ensure her a safe journey. You are right, Pelinor. Sir Lancelot will go for the princess to return by tomorrow night. Very wise, brother. Sir Lancelot will not have time to gather 50 knights before we act. And Arthur will not live to see the dawn of Sunday. And so all England took heart and prepared for the great day of celebration and rejoicing. Peace and justice were to prevail. First, we must take all taxes off foodstuffs. Every man in prison must have a fair hearing. I'm so proud. If only your father could witness it. Prince Galeron to see the king. What can he want? Nothing good, I'm sure. Noble Arthur, I have bad news. It is of such dire nature that it must be known. Speak, Prince. On the road to Camelot, an evil knight has pitched his tent beside a lake and forces every knight who passes by to do him battle. Already he has sorely wounded several, including Sir Kay. Sir Kay wounded? This knight must be dealt with at once. <laughs> Sir Lancelot will return by evening. <laughs> he shall rid us of this evil one. But if Arthur is to be our king and lead all of England, is it not fitting that he vanquish the knight? He is right, Merlin. How can I rule when I cannot, by my own hand, rid my country of such a menace? But no, no, this is foolishness. You'll, you'll be destroyed by your pride, Arthur. You're not, you're not prepared to, to battle with such a man, no. Then I'm not prepared to be king. Make ready my horse, my armor, and my sword. Luck be with you, Arthur. Many thanks, Prince. I am touched by your loyalty. <laughs> How now, brother? What say you? <laughs> what do you think, brother? Being an honest and loyal young man, he took the bait like a starving shark. He'll be here before dark. <laughs> How could he rule? We are doing England a favor. <laughs> and ourselves, too. <laughs> I, I don't like it, Spindle. Yeah, I'll wager King Pelinor is behind all this. Oh, now, let's see. Uh, uh, Galeron said the pavilion was by a lake. <laughs> it's got to be this one. I know a lady who lives in that lake. I must get in touch with her right away. Um, uh, oh, uh, get the crystal ball, Spindle, and then hurry, hurry. Yeah. <laughs> it's our only chance. The lady in the lake. Oh, vision fair. Showing myself through in the air. <laughs> Lady of the Lake. Oh, hurry, hurry, please. Lady of the... This is Merlin calling. Lady of the Lake. 
Do you hear the words of Merlin? Your old friend? I do, Merlin. What wouldst thou? I have something of great importance for you to do. Speak on, magician. Listen carefully and obey every word. <laughs> Would you pass through here, puppy? Nay, I will go no farther until I have destroyed you, evil one. <laughs> Brave and foolish words from one so wet behind the ears. I shall not tarry long with you, young whelp. Prepare to die. <laughs> <laughs> Farewell, you impudent young pretender! Stay your hand, knight. By what right do you interrupt this combat of honor? By the right of a damsel to have a knight bear her scarf in combat, and the privilege of a knight to bear arms blessed by her. I will wear your colors with pride, dear lady. And there is your sword, called Excalibur. I have chosen it for you. Oh, so far. Oh, so, so far, so good. The lady is doing a beautiful job for this. And there he goes, Spindle. He's got the sword. Arthur's got the sword. Come on, you bumpkin. I've wasted enough time here. That sword would do you no good. Oh, ha. the puppy wants to play rough. <laughs> <laughs> So you are the evil knight. Spare my life. Oh, merciful king. It was all a mistake. I can explain everything. Don't kill me. I beg you. I will spare your miserable life. But you and your brother are henceforth exiled from England. And if you ever set foot here again, you'll both hang. Uh. Thank you, Your Majesty. I won't return. I give you my word. You're very kind and just. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you, Lady of the Lake. I must tell you something, my queen. Merlin is a fine magician, but no judge of fighting men. Can you imagine he didn't trust me in combat with Pelinor? Perhaps now, Merlin, you'll permit me to do battle as I see fit? <laughs> yes, yes, gladly, your majesty. Yeah, I have learned my lesson. <laughs> Just be sure and let me know where the battle is to be. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> With lessons from Merlin the Magician, young Arthur learns the importance of right versus might. Coming up next is Walt Disney's animated classic, The Sword in the Stone, right here on Disney.